Hey everyone, it's Mr. Bebe, and this lesson is on evolutionary patterns and trees. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Evolution occurs in patterns, and natural selection is not random at all. So let's look at some of these patterns, beginning with convergent evolution. That is evolution towards similar characteristics in completely unrelated species. So how does that look? Well, if we look at a shark, an ichthyosaur, and a dolphin, they all evolve similar characteristics like fins and tails, which help them swim better, although they descended from different ancestors. A shark came from a fish, ichthyosaur came from a reptile, and dolphins came from mammals. So when you think about this, if you look at wings of bats, birds, and insects, these are all analogous structures. So convergent evolution will have some evidence when we look at analogous structures. The uh, structures that have the same uh, function but came from different ancestors. So let's talk about divergent evolution, the opposite here. These are similar species that evolve in completely different directions. This is actually sometimes also called adaptive radiation. And homologous structures are great examples to use as evidence of divergent evolution. So if we talk about Darwin's finches that he found on the Galapagos Islands, these are great examples of divergent evolution or adaptive radiation. The finches actually became isolated on different islands and had different environments and different needs. So therefore, several new species formed from that original mainland finch. The next one is coevolution. And that's when two or more species is in, evolve in response to one another. Now, usually this can happen in mutualistic relationships, but it can also happen in competitive relationships. And you see there the picture of the bird that evolved a beak that could drink out of that particular shaped flower. So species evolving in response to one another. Another one is extinction. Well, that's the elimination of a species from Earth entirely. Now, this can either happen because of a, a disaster like the one you see in the picture, or if the uh, species is just no longer fit for the environment and cannot survive to reproduce. So if we're talking about patterns of evolutionary change, um, so scientists have noticed these repeating patterns in, in the history that we've uh, accounted for so far, uh, and as reflected in that fossil record, but there are two particular patterns that stand out, and we're going to talk about these. The first one is gradualism. So these are evolutionary changes that occur over really, really long periods of time, and they are, well, gradual. They take place little bits at a time. So if you think about it in terms of a graph, it's a nice standard slope, uh, not much going on, but very, very predictable. Now the opposite of that is something we call punctuated equilibrium. That are, these are evolutionary changes that suddenly, and the reason I say suddenly in quotations is in geologic terms it's sudden, uh, but it really is over thousands and thousands of years. Um, and these are actually uh, followed by long periods of little change. So you have quick change, and then nothing, and then some quick change again. So punctuated equilibrium, uh, quick change followed by nothing. So if we want to look at what these are um, next to each other, a punctuated pattern would be on top here where you have one butterfly that all of a sudden it changes into uh, two different types of species and then nothing happens for a really, really long time. Now if you look at the gradual pattern, you see the coloring uh, slowly, slowly diverging until you've got those two uh, new species that you see. So it happens very, very gradually. So now we're going to get to our second key concept for this lesson. Uh, scientists group organisms together based on evolutionary relationships. And how do they do that? Uh, the study is phylogeny. That's the evolutionary history for a group of species. And scientists compile all this evidence that comes from living species that they can observe, the fossil record, molecular data, which includes DNA. And what they do is they create uh, things like phylogenetic trees or cladograms. So we're going to look at cladistics here, which is the method for making cladograms uh, that is all based on common ancestry. You have roots, which are the common ancestor, and you have nodes and internodes where the uh, branches are coming off of. And the closer these uh, species are on the cladogram, the more uh, closely related they are. So uh, distant ancestors are further away down the base. Recent relatives make up those branches that you see, like species A, B, and C here. Uh, although if you look at this, uh, species B and A might be a little bit more closely related. The main thing that you got to know about cladograms is that on them you will have things that are written called derived characters. 
Now, a derived character is a trait that is shared by some species, but not present in other ones. And the more shared derived characters two species have, the more closely related they are. So if you look at this cladogram here, you have the common ancestor right down there on the, on the root, and you have a, a, a turtle, a lizard, a cat, and a kangaroo. Now, hair is a derived character that showed up on the cladogram between the lizard and the cat, meaning the lizard and everything before that do, do not have hair. And then the cats and kangaroos do have hair. So that's kind of how that works. So let's look at this uh, cladogram here with all these different organisms. And then you see on the bottom, jaws, lungs, claws, nails, all that stuff, those are derived characters. Now, if you're looking, and I, and I was to ask you a question, uh, what derived characters do the salamander and lizard share? Well, what you do is you go and see what derived characters there are up until you reach the point of them. So uh, salamander and lizard would share the jaws and then the lungs. The claws or nails don't come until after the salamander and the lizard has them. So the only two things the only two derived characters that the salamander and lizard share would be jaws and lungs. The lizard would share jaws, lungs, and claws with everything past it, including the pigeon, mouse, and chimp.